Hey everyone, welcome to Whole Artist Mastery. I'm Marianne Mitchell, founder of Whole Artist Mastery, which is about knowing your authentic voice and understanding how that informs your particular use of visual language and color and how you want to show up in the world as an artist. So to that point, today I'm going to share with you three books that have been really instrumental in helping me develop as an artist, as an abstract artist. So there are about three artists of the abstract expressionist movement. And the first one I'm gonna talk about is the biography of uh, de Kooning. And I have to put my glasses on to be able to talk to you about this. Um, it's by Mark Stevens and Anna Lynn Swan, de Kooning, an American master. And as you may be able to see, it won the Pulitzer Prize and the National Book Critics Award when it came out in 2004. Why is this important? Because the story of de Kooning and his life really helped me understand some of the things that I'd been experiencing as an artist. And I, you know, always joke and say, well, I'm certainly not de Kooning. First of all, I'm a woman. And second of all, I, you know, I'm not de Kooning. <laughs> but it's not about that. It's about sharing the, or recognizing that universal artistic struggle, recognizing that who we are as our spirit, and how we were raised, where we were raised, what kind of family life, what kind of landscape, um, what kind of cities did we live in, all of that is part of our foundation in our core expression and how we move through the world in terms of what inspires us to paint. So the story about de Kooning is such that he grew up in Holland in a very poor family. His mother and his father were somewhat verbally abusive, his mother in particular. And um, somewhere along the line, somebody picked up the fact that he was artistically talented and actually paid for art lessons for him. In, he, was, he grew up in Rotterdam. I believe that the art lessons were, might have been in Amsterdam. In any event, when he was 22, this particular man helped him to secure a place as a stowaway on a ship coming to America. So that's how he got here. And he settled in Hoboken, New Jersey, which was where a lot of Dutch people were. And he began to investigate what the world of art was like in New York City and so it goes into how he fell into the true fine art painters because he'd been trained as a graphic designer actually as somebody who could do commercial art so he threw all that away so that he could really devote his whole being to making true fine art and that set him up both for greatness and um, great failure too. Uh, he was very insecure, very poor, and that played into the kind of person that he became. So I could spend the next half an hour telling you all about this story, but I highly recommend that you read it. It's beautifully written. At times it gets a little tedious in the description of his process, but the story is one that I know that you'll be able to relate to. If you are a serious artist and really striving on, uh, on your journey and experiencing the good struggle of figuring out who you are and how that informs what you're doing as an artist. The next one that I found really interesting was a book called Tom and Jack. And it's about the intertwined lives of Thomas Hart Benton and Jackson Pollock by Henry Adams. And it's, you know, it's comparatively speaking, not quite as hefty a book. Uh, the Jackson Pollock biography, by the way, is literally about this thick. So I have yet to crack that beyond a few pages. Um, this book came out in uh, 2009 
And what I found very, really interesting about this was understanding the relationship, the mentor relationship between Jackson Pollock and Thomas Hart Benton. Very different painters. Thomas Hart Benton was much more realistic. But he met Jackson Pollock, who had grown up in Wyoming, the youngest of four boys. His parents were both ne'er-do-wells, alcoholics, and basically abandoned their four boys. So the eldest brother decided he wanted to go to New York City and become an artist. So he brought his three brothers with him, and they all started taking classes at the Art Student League, where they met Thomas Hart Benton. And Thomas Hart Benton took a shine to these boys, particularly to Jackson, because he could see that Jackson was the one with the real talent. And so it's um, a very interesting story about how Jackson learned from Thomas, how Thomas saw Jackson grow and develop and into his own very unique way of making art. And when you look at Thomas Hart Benton's work, you can see some of the compositional uh, approaches, even though he's a, a realist painter, you can see some of those ways of composing in Jackson's extremely wild and um, you know all over the place splatter paintings. So I highly recommend that in terms of seeing how other artists can influence you as an artist and how you take from what they're giving you and make it your own and go and um, develop your, your work. So the third book, which I'm sure a lot of you already know about, is The Ninth Street Women, which is at about the very same time that the de Kooning book is written about. This came out in 2018, I believe. And so the, a lot of the same artists appear in the de Kooning book that are in this book. But this book is told from the female artists point of view back in those times, you know, the artists who were um, painting alongside of de Kooning and Pollock, Lee Krasner, Elaine de Kooning, Grace Hardigan, <clears throat> Joan Mitchell, and Helen Frankenthaler, and how they were influencing the men who were painting and how the men <clears throat> were influencing the women. What's also interesting about this book is that, at least for me, who is a little thin on uh, World War II and World War I American history, um, I learned a lot about what was going on in the world at that time as it related to what artists were doing with their work and why they were making abstract work and why, were, why they were throwing the, um, the conformist way of making realist work out the window in favor of pure expression, throwing paint and working with their brushes all over the canvas without a particular concrete image to inform what they're doing. So I, I also found this quite inspirational in terms of seeing what these women were doing as women artists at a time when women really didn't have the kind of freedoms that we have today. That's debatable. But in terms of um, the uh, support and the societal uh, mantle that women walked around with, what society expected of women, these women threw all that aside. Grace Hardigan actually you know, broke her heart, but she left her son with her uh, her parents or his grandparents, I guess, from her husband's ex-husband's side, to raise her son, so that she could dedicate her life to being an artist. So um, I have found reading these books hugely helpful in understanding how I am as an artist, how, why I feel the way I feel, why the, or actually validating the struggles that I've experienced with insecurity and um, trying to figure out what it is I really want to say as a mentor, having worked with so many different artists, understanding the relationship between mentors and their mentees, 
and understanding how what's going on in the world at the particular time that we're, we are living as artists is helping to or is shaping and influencing on a, a big level what we're trying to accomplish as artists which is entirely dependent on who each one of us is as a human being. So I hope that you will enjoy reading these books. Links to the books will be at the bottom of this video. If you've enjoyed this little discussion about how books can really help you figure out who you are as an artist, please like and subscribe to this wonderful YouTube channel. I look forward to seeing you somewhere uh, either in Wham Wednesday, which is a free discussion that I offer once a month. You have to subscribe to Whole Artist Mastery on my website and you'll get notices about Wham Wednesday and some very interesting things that I think about along the way that I share with people. So I hope to see you. I hope that you will join the community because it's really about artists who care about developing their authentic voice and understand the crucial relationship between their voice and how they make work, how you use your particular tools, how you use line, color, shape, value, and texture as opposed to the way to use those particular pieces of visual language and how all of that informs you about who you are and how you want to show up as an artist. Because I believe that when all of those things are fully together, we are whole artists. We are kindling that whole energy in the world, in a world that's very fractured. And in our own infinitesimal way, we are offering that whole energy just by focusing on becoming a whole person and making whole art. So thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.